Hey guys, this is Andreas with Pocketables.com and in this video I'm going to show you how you can create a file browser in Tasker. So, uh, why would you want something like that? Well, Tasker does of course have a built-in file browser for uh, finding files when you, uh, when you deal with any file related uh, actions or stuff like that in Tasker. But ever since uh, the ability to export apps uh, export project and a task to apps was added. There's sort of been this uh, this void where uh, it's not as easy to do things in the child app as it is in Tasker simply because some of the infrastructure is missing. Uh, and one thing that's missing is a file browser. So if you want to make an app, uh, you might need a file browser in order to allow people to all select files for use in your app so it's actually very very simple to make one but you have to do it the, the correct way when I first tried this I did not do it the right way um, I got some nice pointers from the task or Google uh, Google group uh, so uh, now I have a method of doing it that's just so much more efficient so uh, let's start with the scene because we need to reference that afterwards just let's just call it browser or something like that. Okay, that already exists. File browser. Then. And let's just create a large scene. Long press, select menu, uh, and then I'm going to start configuring this menu element. So we want the source to be a variable and let's just decide now that it's going to be called uh, uh, listed files so that's the variable that's going to cr um, contain all the files in any specific directory which is then going to be used um, to actually display the items in the menu and this is going to be a comma separated list of, uh, of files and folders in that directory which is sort of going to well you'll see later but it's actually quite simple uh, selection mode let's just leave that at, uh, at none going to select the uh, item layout which brings into the secondary scene editor which basically just edits how the uh, scene that's used for each item looks so just going to make it completely transparent um, I'm going to just expand the text field and uh, decrease the font size in that text field so it's easier to see long file paths and stuff like that uh, file names just select OK and then we're going to go into item tap which is going to be what's going to happen when you tap an item so when you tap an item uh, it's going to um, go into that directory so that means that we need to use the list files option the directory is going to be tap labels i'm going to explain why why i do all of this later uh, tap label two variable files lowercase local variable so that basically uh, what this does is that when we tap a directory in the list um, the name of that directory which also happens to be the path is going to be stored in the local variable tap label so what we do when we list files using tap label as the directory is basically list the files in the directory that we tap and we're going to list that into the a variable files which actually creates an array not a variable so we're going to end up with let's say we have a folder with 10 files so we're going to end up with files 1 files 2 files 3 and uh, all the way until 10 but we don't want an array because that doesn't really work that well here because well that's the mistake I made when I first did this so we're going to transfer all of that into the listed files variable we created earlier uh, or created by created I mean we used it for the menu element itself I'm just going to set that to files and basically just uh, 
parentheses like this without anything in inside them which basically means list all the items in the array separated by a comma. I'm going to click OK. Um, and then I'm going to go into item long tab which is going to be our uh, open feature. Select the uh, open file. Tap label again. Um, and then we're also going to destroy this scene. Uh, okay, so it's actually not listed here yet because I haven't uh, saved out, but maybe this will work. Yeah, so it says that uh, this little warning triangle thing actually, it, it kind of wants us to, uh, it, it kind of believes that there is no scene called it, but we're actually in it now. So that's just because when you're dealing with scenes, you have to save all the way out of Tasker uh, for it to actually update its internal references, which is sort of annoying because it's, it's often, a, often the source of um, various errors and stuff like that. We're going to save out. So it's just going to complain until we get this done. Just going to select background color all the way to black. Um, maybe if we go back in now, it actually knows that it exists. So now you see the little warning triangle is gone and everything. So that's the scene. Um, we need a task to actually launch it. So. Um, Let's just create that and we're basically going to do the same thing here as we did in the tap tab. It's just that we're going to start with the uh, with the root directory. So we're going to go into file, list files, just specify a slash for the directory, which basically just means root. Uh, do the same thing, read it into files. Uh, and then we do a variable set for listed files we have to use global a global variable here because otherwise it isn't capable of transferring it uh, between all the between the launch tag has task and the scene and stuff like that and that's also why you shouldn't use an array because then you would have to use a global array and when you start using global arrays uh, there are so many uh, global variables being set that it slows it down something ridiculous so once again uh, set it file um, all the contents of the array files and then we're going to um, just show the scene okay I'm just going to select activity full display no title um, just Go out of that one. I'm going to add a task cut shortcut to the home screen just to have something to launch it with without having to go into Tasker. I don't really like doing that. So just select OK and I'm going to launch it. So what it did right now was it listed all the files in the root directory into the array, uh, the local array files, and then it sort of uh, took all of that and combined it into one global variable. Uh, that global variable is then the source of the menu item which we're scrolling through right now. Uh, and because it's comma separated, it's automatically separated into different um, different items. So when we Tap, tap on an uh, item, uh, the label, which is basically the name, what we were tapping, is going to be used to list a new set of files and do the same thing all over again. So when we click it, it's actually, you can see it's very fast and it basically goes straight into um, listing the files in the new directory. So just by doing this, we can uh, browse through all the files, just go into uh, directory that has pictures of my dog and if I just try to tap it now it's going to give an error because now I basically told it to 
uh, try to you, uh, list the files in a directory that is actually a file or not a directory. So instead we're going to long tap and then it's going to open a file. Eventually in um, large pictures and stuff. So that's my dog talking to a goat. So as you can see, this is a very simple file browser. Uh, there is no way to go back to the previous directory. Uh, by, by no way, I mean that I didn't put in a way in this one because I just wanted to show the very basics. But you can make it as, uh, as advanced as you want. You can just create something on top that says go back because then you basically just store the last version of uh, listed files and then basically just uh, go back to that one. Um, I guess it's also possible to just uh, uh, have both the tap action be open directory and also open file if it's a file but then you start using more actions so I just want to show you how simple it is to create a very basic file browser so if you wanted to use this in an exported project as a file browser you would basically uh, uh, switch out whatever uh, the flash thing I put in no I didn't put a flash uh, the open file I put in uh, the the long tap tab with something like uh, transferring tap label to a global variable which you then use in your project so yeah very simple um, just also a very nice uh, example of why global variables, uh, why global arrays are bad, which I didn't know when I start, first started doing this. So that's it. Um, hopefully this has been useful. Um, as usual, thank you for watching.